What is going on? We're making noise. You are making noise. You made a hole. We did. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue, this is Bill. And we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England where the porch is under construction. So you're, you're getting a little teaser for uh, next week's video. We are not trained professionals. Go ahead and try this at home. <laughs> Your results may vary. <laughs> Let me just catch you up on what's been going on. Come on along. Liv is gonna be pitching some yeast today <laughs> to make some dandelion wine. And we've got almost eight quarts of dandelion heads here that we fleeced. What have you done, son? I, I messed up a lot of flowers. That's real time consuming. And I, it's like, I hear that this is one of the most time consuming wines to take, like after I've already started on this. It's like, oh yeah, well I forget that every time. Yeah, but you'll have lots and lots of wine. I hope so. All right. This is five times more than we did last year. There's 10 pounds of sugar over there. Eight, eight quarts of dandelions. Eight pounds of raisins behind the 10 pounds of sugar. Those are gonna get blended and then added with the flowers. The dandelions. Good times. <laughs> They're all, all over the place. <laughs> it's Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday. Yes. Yay, Wednesday. 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 What is that? It's a bucket. Look at the, look at the That's a hoochin bucket? That's, That's a hoochin bucket. bucket. That's a huge hoochin bucket. These are the ones that I got hooch. from um, the restore. restore. The Habitat for Humanity concession store. I found a whole kit, a whole beer kit from this company who, it's a decent company. It's a shame that there aren't very many like local brewing stores or one that was closed, uh, closed, but. Oh no, really? Yeah, but Northern Brewer is fairly reasonably priced, but I found one of their full um, kits to make an IPA at the thrift shop. And I don't like IPAs, but I do like free gear that comes with a $10 beer kit. It's a yay hooch and bucket. So there's two of these. I need to clean this off and sanitize it, obviously. But I really like all this it stuff. It came with there. two of these? Or yeah, there's two of them right there? No, this is one. Wow. But it came with two. A primary and a secondary fermentation. That's Sweet. All. And I've got the glass ones, two narrow mouth, one wide mouth. So I think we've got plenty of stuff to do big batches. Woohoo! Yeah. And when will these be ready? Months. Months. Like? Months. At least four months. Think for Thanksgiving it'll be ready? Probably. Hopefully. We can pop a bottle at Thanksgiving and see how it is. All right. I think that's what we did last year. It is what we did. We did the tomato wine last year. I think we also did a dandelion wine. And Thanksgiving is more than four months away. Thankful. Six months. Six months. Six months. Favorite holiday. It's going to be a fair bit of squeezing this for a minute. Do you hear it fizzing? Yeah. And just for the record, I did wash and sanitize my hands before I reached into my brew. It's true. I'm sure this is a luxury that farmers for centuries did not have. <laughs> I, I think we've just also raised our standards. It's, it's about the bacteria really that we gave. And I didn't do the orange this year. Last year it was like a dandelion blood orange wine. And I actually do still have one bottle left. It was more of like a citrusy sort of thing. Boop. Boom. And then what happens to this? I'm gonna put a smaller airlock on it. Uh-huh. Because I don't think that we're in danger of it overflowing anymore. And then it's gonna go to the basement for a few weeks to months. Nice, okay. Yeah. Say bye. Bye. Do we think they're the bluets that we planted last year? I am going to have to get some identification done because these almost look like an amanita. We've got the veil, the veil right here. Okay. We've got some uh, some scales on top that uh, may show that it burst out of an egg, and we see it has a kind of a thicker bulb at the bottom there um however the gills themselves are purple purplish yeah so i think these might be the bluets but need to double check so let me explain mike and i are out here walking the grounds 
Say hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. <laughs> and uh, Mike stops and he goes, holy, is that the Bluets? And so let me show you what he saw. Let me give you my hand for scale here. Oh my God, these are enormous. I didn't know Bluets got this big. We don't know for sure that they're Bluets yet. We're gonna do some IDing. But this is the bed that they grew in and they are just spawning in this area, nothing else. Which would make a lot of sense. But this, these already dropped their spores. Look at this honker, that's gigantic. Oh my gosh. Now next time we catch them before they before they their veils pop open and maybe uh, maybe we can get a meal out of them but <laughs> these I think are a little bit too past their date. Yeah, they've they've been here a minute. But they're they're kind of dry, kind of crispy. Like yeah, they they look like they've done their stuff. Ooh, what's that like? Foamy. There is still some moisture in there, but oh, you see the I'm rubbing the spores back onto it. Ah. Uh. No real distinct smell. But look look how much mycelium that just let out. That's wow. fucking that's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. They're so <clears throat> these threads are so substantial. Right? Oh my gosh. What this means is they are mycorrhizal. These are called mycorrhizae. Uh-huh. Um they are a network that spread through the ground. Well the spores are black, we can see that. Specifically, look on top of this one. See? Oh, that's a spore print from something that was growing over it. It is. Oh. So are these then different from these little ones? Nope. They're, They're the just same. more mature? Correct. Okay. Mike's grabbing a handful of them to put in his yard. These ones in the back are so pretty. I probably missed these coming up by a day or two. Probably. Mushrooms of the Northeast. Bluets, page 142. There we are, bluets. Mature specimens tan to brownish, mm -hmm. often with slight modeling. Gills may retain some purplish co uh, coloration, particularly around the cap edge. I don't actually think these are bluets. No? Have. I don't think these are also wine caps. I'm also gonna try this. It says it's a wine cap. Really? I think these might be wine caps. I just think they're gigantic wine caps. Really? That's. Because we also put wine cap uh, stuff back there too. We did. I had completely forgotten about that until right now. Okay, spore print is black. Spore print, spore print is black. We have a substantial veil. The gills are like purplish gray. Um, and they do have that same modeling up top that we, what we've seen before. I just think we always picked them before they got this big. And I also think it's so shaded in back there that they allowed themselves to get much larger. They must have, it's wetter back there too. Yeah, the cap of the mushroom may be as wide as eight inches. Wow! So. I had no idea. This is, this is like, I would say like four inches. Oh my so. gosh. I'm just surprised they turned inside out. Cap expands with age becoming broadly convex. Ah! So. Okay. Ha! Huh. Uh, older specimens may fade to tan and develop cracks, especially in dry conditions. Okay, well there you go. There you go. Wow, that's really cool. Cool. Fuck yeah, keep an eye out on that bed. I will. More wine caps and I'm gonna inoculate my own yard with them now. Hot. So. Oh, that makes me so happy. Still no fluids though. No fluids. <laughs> Did we check the other spot? Uh, where... Where Biscuit rests. Biscuits. Yeah, uh, I did look. Uh, I didn't see anything there. I may have killed them. I may have killed them over the winter. It could be a very acidic cat. It could be a very acidic cat. 
Hasidic cat? Uh. Hey, he did one of our mitzvah. He studied mysticism. Will you just look at this garden? It's coming back to life. I mean, a lot of it's weeds, but you know. Also, plucky little carrot. Radishes are coming in, spinach is coming in, and I need to plant all this stuff. And also this stuff, because, you know, might have had a moment at the nursery. Oh, children. Oh, kids. Hello. Hello, Mama Drama. How you doing? Would you say she's doubled in size? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is this is our three week old girl. Three weeks tomorrow? No, three weeks yesterday. We have begun to um, eat pellets, or at least mouth them. You're eating with your tiny, tiny teethies. Look at those itty bitty teeth. So we should start kid sharing um, in another few weeks. And I'm not sure quite how we're gonna do that because we'll need to separate Lyric overnight. So we may have an engineering issue on our hands, but we will do, we will do. Also on the big to-do list is we've got to get this stanchion fixed because drummer can slip her head right through it when it's closed. It's getting tougher to do that, huh? You're so big. Granola and milk. It's a pretty good diet. So that's what we've been up to. I'm so glad you could hang out with us today. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm going to make a clips compilation of just animal noises at some point. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.